And welcome everybody here in Twitch chats and everybody on YouTube for some ores of value to start our day off today. This is our first deck up. We got a, a donation to uh, revisit this deck that I, I was looking it up. Looks like we haven't played it for over a month and that's too bad. And so we're going to change that with playing ores of value here. The reason why we call this uh, a value deck, the reason why it has that name is because our creatures have... Uh, a lot of ETB effects, and um, and it's it's just a lot of creatures that can generate value in different ways whenever they enter the battlefield or if they stay on the battlefield, either one. And so that's what we that's why we're calling it that. It's a creature based value deck. That's why I like to to call the decks value. But anyway, let's take a look at, at how that is. We're starting off with some discard cards. We got Burglarette and Fenlurker. Fenlurker is a better card than Burglarette. You can see we have three of each. The reason why we have three of each is just because of the ease to cast. Burglar Rat's easier to cast. Um, but Fenlurker is just going to be a better card. <clears throat> and then our other two drop... Oh, Hawkeye's underneath me. The other two drop is uh, what really what the deck's kind of built around. Charming Prince being able to flicker all of these creatures with ETB effects and scry and gain life and come back from sword and do all sorts of stuff so we have the charming prince which works really well with those midnight reapers get us a lot of card draw murderous rider gets us some removal a yara can get some drain life in there and some card draw we can sacrifice these little little guys for some card draw bell hunt just kind of uh, adds to the burglarette and fenlurker effect of making the opponent discard cards also gains us life it's a perfect card to flicker with charming prince um, but then our, our other engine card besides Charming Prince is Soren. Soren brings all of this stuff back after it dies. You know, we can chump block with Burglar Rat, for example, bring it back with Soren. Bring back Charming Prince can flicker things like Bell Hunt or some of our Cavaliers. Um, Soren gives our all of our stuff lifelink to be able to keep our life total nice and high. This deck's just definitely built around Soren and Charming Prince. Anyway, our five mana slot is really where we, we see we have a lot of mythics here. We got six cards. We got um, Cavalier of Night, which works perfectly with all these two and three drops, especially Charming Prince being able to flicker it. Um, but then, you know, you can bring back like Midnight Reaper and everything. Cavalier of Dawn, if our opponent, we don't really do the enchantment part, the, the second part, but just if our opponents have, you know, problematic permanence, which everybody does, it just gives us removal for everything. Um, Kenrith, that can be an instant speed way to reanimate all of our value creatures and put them back into play depending on which one uh, is needed for the situation including in the late game whenever our opponent is empty-handed we can reanimate a discard effect at instant speed during their draw step make them discard it but then of course our, our, our one of our like main win conditions or like really main ways to go wide is oketra oketra turns all of these creatures into additional four fours as well um and, and Oketra is just an underplayed card, in my opinion, in Standard. I think it's a really good one. And then Liliana get us more card draw. Um, yeah, so this is just a pretty sweet deck. So let's give this a, a shot. We're going to play it through a league. Let's see how we do with Orzov value. Uh, Velshelda, yeah, I, I don't do any, any other gaming on stream. Um, just, just chilling, like, but, you know, like at night a after stream or... Or something like that. Sometimes I'll, I have a Nintendo Switch that I'll play. Um, the games that I, I play on there are just kind of the classics. Um, Zelda, Breath of the Wild. I spent months on that. Um, the Super Mario Odyssey on there. Right now I'm playing Luigi's Mansion that came out a month or two ago. All right, our deck has 26 lands in it. Uh, Fire Emblem was awesome. Our deck has 26 lands in it, so I'm thinking that we can hit some land drops. Even with keeping a two lander, I, I don't feel too bad about keeping a two lander. Or too worried about it. But sometimes you don't hit your land drops. PS4 has all the good games. Well, I'm pretty, I'm pretty satisfied with 
with my switch. And I wouldn't have extra time. I did I did see on the, the Switch recently they remastered Final Fantasy VIII on there in, like, September. And I haven't played Final Fantasy VIII since, like, whenever it came out a long time ago. And I've wanted to... Because I've, I've gone back and replayed 7 and 9 and 10 and stuff like that. And I've wanted to go back and replay 8. And so... Uh, but it, it wasn't on, like, the, the phone, like... Like iOS. Like the other. Like those other games, or at least like 7 and 9. So after I play Luigi's Mansion, I think I'm going to go back through Final Fantasy VIII. So I think it's pretty likely they have Dovin's Veto, especially since they're going Borrower instead of Chemistry's Insight. Hey Rex, good morning, or good afternoon, I suppose. How was your lunch, Hawkeye? Hope your lunch was good. Yeah, good lunch. What's up, AP? Ap Apta Rookie. Thank you so much for the push prom sub. Hawkeye appreciates it. Right, Hawkeye? Yeah, he's happy. Third sub on the day. All right. See you, Burglar Rat. See you, Brazen Borrower. So I wanted to play that pre-combat, you know, so it looks like I could have attacked for three first and then done that. But the problem with, with doing that is this Castle Ardenvale. If I attack for three and they just activate the Castle Ardenvale, kill my 1-1, one, one, block my, or at least block my 1-1. One, one. I know my responsibility. I've got it. Ugh, not a great time for a tap land. Hmm. Yeah, not a great time for a tap land, so I don't get to double spell. Oh, it's okay, Choco. It's worth it.
This is certainly the part of the game where my opponent wants to be. You know, nine mana. Have both of these castles. You know, 14 life. Like, this is... This is where they want to be. Good, Fran. Good. No, I am not making this. Uh, donation go. decks. There's, if you check the info panel, there's, uh, or like you know, just like like the different. Yeah, I mean, I guess that's what you just call them. The the info panels. There's, one that has a lot of information about donation decks. Um. No, no, no change on any schedule next week. Just every everything normal. It's a tough spot. If I play more things, just have more things get get planar cleansinged. Like planar cleansing definitely makes playing stuff difficult. Like normally we could just play Soren. But because of planar cleansing, I don't want to play Soren. But I mean, normally, if you know, if we were just playing against like an Esper deck that's just having Kai's Wraths and things like that in time wipe. <clears throat> but yeah, you can see their castle's really taking over. Alright, well they're keeping their cards on top. Yeah, Cavalier of Night and Midnight Reaper is a good combo against board wipes, though. That is true. We got rid of their hand. Unfortunate. <laughs> That's awesome, Matthew. All right, so we got 10 mana, so let's have Kenrith start reanimating stuff. Uh, for this deck, what could you use instead of Black Cavalier? Uh, you... I mean, kind of anything. There's just a there's a lot of good, you know, rare and mythic black and white creatures. You can just use more of the, the cards that are in the deck that are not four ofs. Yeah, Doom Whisperer. Yep. 
That's a good one. Um, Ayara. You're playing an extra Ayara. I mean, even something like Rankle. Alright, so I think we're good here. Wait, do I only have one discard thing? No, I have two discard things, right? So I'm going to let them draw their card. Put Belhan into play. So they, you know, they can't just draw another board wipe. So I'm just going to reanimate Belhan and Burglar Rat during draw step. Which I guess I should have done that the previous turn instead of going and getting Cavalier of Night. Get an extra bell hunt, extra command the dread horde. Obviously the duresses. Legion's end can go. Cavalier of Dawn can go. Um could probably take out a Yara. <laughs> All right, let's see. Murderous Rider could probably go, or at least, you know, one Murderous Rider. Yeah, I guess I'll take out a Yara. And... Our, a Yara makes Command the Dread Horde better, but I think that's okay. I don't know. I kind of want to play all these. We got to cut one. No Ketra? Oketra well, basically needs a sweeper by itself, and then it keeps coming back. But it's expensive. Vulnerable to Teferi. Hey, Kaysens. All right, so no discard to drop. We'll just go like Prince Scry to. Yeah. I could wait and try to flicker a bell haunt, but uh, you know, we're playing against the control deck that I think we need to put some pressure, keep those cards. So those are good. Yeah, Matthew, I don't... Yeah, I played... Yeah, as far as Fires of Invention and Historic, uh, a few days ago... Let's slow um, this down. I guess it was, it was Tuesday. Tuesday, I played two Fires of Invention decks in Historic, and... Yeah, Fires of Invention was just pretty ridiculous. It was so good. Do I want land number five there? Yeah. If I'm going to go Bell Haunt t this turn, and then that turn I'd have Midnight Reaper plus Charming Prince, Flicker Bell Haunt. This might be a bad idea. Of course, they could just have a sweeper, though. Um, so, if they find one with the chemist's insight, oh, they, they, like they have to find time wipe. So, if they find time wipe, then I don't have my midnight reaper in play fast enough. Hey, MC, happy Friday. <laughs> Just barking fires after they scry, but before draw step. 
That is the dream right there. All right, I'll just kind of hide. I'll just hide this bell haunt. So you know, if they do have a sweeper, they don't kill the bell haunt. Devout decree is really rough because that means I don't get to get it back with Soren. That was a really good card. So I'm not playing around a sweeper here, but because I want to have the extra blocker to protect Soren. Not too surprised there. Land. Hmm, not land. Um we land, of course, we could have gone Burglar Rat, make them discard, and then bring back Charming Prince, make them discard again. So that's, that's definitely what I wanted. I'm going to play the Kenrith. Yeah, this deck really does have loads of interesting lines. Yeah, like there's so many lines you can do with this thing. Stand by and watch. With Char yeah, Charming Prince, Soren. You can do a lot of crazy stuff. All right, got rid of a brazen borrower. Pretty good. That's more like it. That is not more like it. Gotta kill the Gadwicks, because definitely worried about Time Wipe picking it back up. Obviously, Teferi Time Rattler can pick it back up, too. But it looks like my opponent's got this one. Gadwick's pretty good. Here we go. They know about the Kenrith, so it's not like I can just play the Soren and then, you know, try to bait out a counter spell. Like when they already know about the card in hand. Yeah, the Devout Decrees were, were definitely really clutch. For Midnight Reaper and Cavalier of Night. Don't worry, I got. This. Still, even mass manipulation. That's a tough card to beat. That, not loving my game three matchup. We'll, you know, we'll see what happens. I'm 
obviously the Gadwick. Just gave them so many cards here. Oh, I've done the hero thing before. I kind of want to play that last murderous rider to, to kill Gadwicks, but we got three. Yeah, that's a lot of, yeah, th this match could definitely come down to that, like whether my opponent draws Gadwick in the late game or not. Um, yeah, that, that could definitely be a huge part of this game. I'm not sure if I want turn one duress. I kind of like turn three duress. I kind of like burglar rat on two, burglar rat plus duress on three. That means we get to see the next, you know, two more cards from them. Hey, Uki. It's going to be pretty hard for us to draw two lands that are not black sources as far as Cavalier of Night goes. Welcome, Sarah Angel from Portugal. Discard Devout Decree. So I'm taking six life to draw a card here. Paying the two with the Goblet Shrine and, and more with the castles. Oh, I should have played the Soren first. I mean, I should have played the Soren first for the lifelink. Usually like waiting and you know playing the playing the card post combat. <sighs> hmm. You know, to give them a chance to play instance, but I just really hope they don't have planar cleansing. Just time wipe. That's a good sign. Uh, 
That's also a good sign. If they would counter the Midnight Reaper, we would just bring it back with the Soren. What a mess I've made. Yeah, I think that's completely reasonable to discard Teferi. I don't think Teferi is that good right here. I think that's a completely reasonable discard. So it gets that bar over out of there, puts the Midnight Reaper in the graveyard for my Cavalier of Night and for Soren. So you know we use and so instead of them just bouncing that and then put it putting the borrower back in their hand with the time wipe and bouncing more things. Got that out of there. I think we can beat the time wipe. I think. I have three cards in hand. That's a good one. I think we can clear out this Gadwick also. I require your body, not your soul. Hmm. Maybe we can't. I guess we can. So three, six, nine, twelve, plus five is seventeen. I guess this is not a smart play because Midnight Reaper could kill me. Alright, never mind. See you, Midnight Reaper. Don't worry, I got you. Alright, GG's. 
Yeah, that was my plan was to make them discard the last card, but then <clears throat> but then you know they could have top decked it another time wipe or planar cleansing, so I guess I should not have grabbed the Reaper. But oh well, we just sacrificed it, so it's all good. Just... So like that was my plan was get rid of their entire hand and get a, a battlefield. And there we go. Want to know? <laughs> that was just like a 35 minute match. GG's. No, I don't think you can expect an increase in black and white after Theros. No, I don't I don't think so. I don't think we can real I don't I wouldn't say that for any color combination that you could really expect an increase. I think the most on the draw. The most likely increases in color combination. Now, I wouldn't necessarily say go as far as to use the word expect for these. But the most likely increases in for color combination are going to be the colors that don't have the temples yet. Black white already has a temple. So colors like like blue black you know, green, red, the cards, the colors that don't have their temples yet. Those sh should be the focal point color combinations of Theros. At least that would be, that'd be a good guess. I didn't play Burglar Rat right here because I thought it was, it was definitely possible they had Cauldron Familiar in hand. Um, now I don't think they have Cauldron Familiar since they since they have not they did not play it. Because really I just don't want them to just to, just be able to discard Cauldron Familiar very easily. So instead I just got an extra Scoured Barons in play because of our awkward mana base here. So obviously we have to kill the Mayhem Devil. This is a way to get the Murderous Rider in the graveyard so we can bring him back and not down to the bottom of our library. Trailer Combs is pretty rough. There's one card I could choose for them not to draw. This match would be Trailer Crumbs. Okay, yeah. Yeah, Matthew, not a problem. So they could have killed the rat and then killed Soren. Chose not to. Chose to instead leave Soren alive. Let's 
something on my mind. Why can't we have more mana? I really want to kill Vraska and I want to make them discard this Witch's Oven, but we can't do both. I guess we're definitely going to make them discard the, the Witch's Oven. I know it's kind of weird. We we do need mana, but the deck has twenty six lands. I don't think it's that. I don't think it's gonna be that difficult to draw lands. <clears throat> we kind of need cards that will take over that can outgrind trail of crumbs, and we don't have cards that outgrind trail of crumbs right now. No, we certainly don't. Yeah, I want to land this last turn to be able to, to Murderous Rider and Charming Prince. The the next turn isn't the biggest deal. I'm I'm definitely casting Murderous Rider on the Golgari Queen. But my my opponent has this well in hand with these trail crumbs. We got a lot of sideboard for this matchup. Because I, I knew that Trailer Crumbs would be difficult game one. Oh, I guess we don't. <laughs> we have we have a lot less sideboard than I thought we did. Must have been a, thinking about a different deck that I was making earlier. Okay, we don't have that much sideboard. Yeah, yeah, I do like Kaya. I do think Kaya is a good card in this matchup. I mean, there's really only one card I'm scared of in their deck, and that's Trailer Crumbs. And my opponent had two early Trailer Crumbs. It's really it, but that's still a very good card.
yeah, we could definitely have a lot more. Like, there's, you know, we could be playing more Mortifies. We could be playing Kaya or Zav Usurpers. There's, there's a lot of ways to change the sideboard up to just target John to Sacrifice and have a lot of success here. So the one ones that my deck is, the the deck is built around with Rat and Fenlurker are weak to Mayhem Devil as we saw there. I'm not sure, really sure what I want my plan to be, what I want my plan of attack to be. Are they Oketra? <laughs> Thanks, buddy. Yeah, the 19-1 run the other day was awesome. That was it was so close to the 20-0 too. The that last game, we just need to draw the land. I know. All we need to do is just draw one land. That was pretty rough. Uh, yeah, blood soaked to altar is not very good, no. Yeah, like, it's, it's not really anything for standard. It's like a maybe do something in limited card. Wish I would have taken the, the goose. Let's see in their hand. <clears throat> no, it would it would not be it would not be good still even if it was instant speed for that ability. If I let the Vraska live, they can play the Trail of Crumbs and sack the food to the Trail of Cr to the Vraska and pay the one and get an ex extra permanent and kind of hit a land drop from there and, and move on and then keep going. I want to play the Murderous Rider, but we got to watch out for, you know, like Wicked Wolf just gets to eat it, but maybe they don't use the Wicked Wolf to eat it. That was a good draw. 
Liliana, save us. Save us. Um, that cannot have been what they wanted to do with Bone Crusher Giant. That could not have been what they wanted to do. That's probably going to cost them this game. Yep. All right, anything I'm changing. Wicked Wolf kind of demands more Disparks. Crusher Giant's so good. It's a good addition there. I'm going to take out one Prince and get the second Kaiserath in here. Hey, Errol. <laughs> oh no, earlier I accidentally targeted Bone Crusher Giant instead of Questing Beast with a spell and killed myself. Whoops. Yeah, Dispark does have some good hits. But I don't think we have room for it. Unless I want to just kind of abandon, like, the regular... Um, the regular main aspect of the deck. Stop having this card. Yeah, we, we started a little late, um, finishing putting together a donation deck, a late donation deck, but, um, yeah, we've been streaming for 54, 54 minutes with this deck, and we're, I mean, we're on game three of match two, but yeah, we played against blue-white control, and now Jun sacrificed to the two slow decks in the format. I guess that, that allows them to use this food very mana efficiently. I don't know. I want the Temple of Silence for the next turn. I'm not sure if I want another Midnight Reaper. I mean, already being at 16. I'll leave it there. We can scry to the bottom with the Temple if we want to...
Hey, Blue Gen. <laughs> Thanks, I have to die. I don't know if we can beat two trailer crumbs, honestly. So right now, they don't have any way to make food with getting rid of the goose, but that's just right now. They get three more, you know, like basically they get to look at six more cards plus their draw steps, you know, like so they're going to be digging pretty, pretty fast. What's Mono Black Crisis? Yeah, it's just it's a Mono Black control deck with Hydroid Crisis for the top end. Maybe we'll draw Liliana. Yeah, that's probably game. All right, so looks like our sideboard needs a lot of help for this matchup. <laughs> yeah, basically Storm. So rough because like attacking is not even good for me. Whoa. Really surprised I didn't block. So we're sacking Charming Prince to get rid of a food. <laughs> But yeah, making them use the food while they're tapped out is is good. Now that's a card. And that's a card. Hey Pedro. There's no chromatic lanterns. Just playing 
you know, watery graves and overgrown tombs and drowned catacomb and woodland cemetery. Hold on, loosely. Don't let him go. It's lethal if I don't block. Seven, eight. Seven, eight, nine. Yeah, it is lethal. And eleven. Twelve. Yeah. Sorry, bunny. I'm flattered, but... Gosh, I just don't have a shot. Fenlurker Liliana? Yeah, Oketra Fenlurker. I guess the Oketra does just get, get grasped. Your will maybe I get Liliana out here first. Maybe we can get a lot of card advantage. Uh, I don't know exactly what we're doing with that card advantage yet. I mean, the thing is, is I, I couldn't just make good Pioneer content without playing the format a whole lot. Like, that's the thing is you need to, you need to really be, you know, invested in the format and, and, you know, really play it a lot and really know the ins and outs and everything to be, you know, for exactly like what to make for cyborg plans and all that kind of stuff. Um, it's just too much time. I don't... Hey, Necrolepsy. I need to get Mayhem Devils on my side with this Dreadhorde. How can we do that? We can Kaya's Wrath first. Trailer Crumbs is so busted. Kai's Wrath would get rid of th three of the Gilded Geese. That's pretty important. 
And I had four mana left, so I could go like Wrath Bell Hunt. Keeping my life total high for Charming Prince is, or for uh, Command the Dreadhorde is very important. And them not getting any use out of that, that food for Trailer Crumbs is very important. This is a good triple block. I can even minus Liliana now to take out the Wicked Wolf. Yeah, Liliana's keeping me in this. Keeping me with this great card advantage. So I guess instead of going Bell Hunt, make them discard. Let's go Charming Prince and Rant. Wow. Wow. Liliana outgrinded Jun to sacrifice. Wow. Liliana's awesome. Liliana is pretty awesome. Yeah, Plitha, that's that's of course a an overreaction from the from the other uh, room that you said that in. But still, as as like somebody's a streamer, I never like hearing somebody say like, "Oh, you look sleepy today," or "You look tired," or that kind of stuff. It's it's there's just no real real way to respond to it. I understand that that those kind of comments like usually come from you know a place of caring do i want the bell hunt i obviously want the legion's end here do i want the bell hunt i think i need mana it's just it's you know like really hard to respond to it's like what do you, what do you really say it's like... boo I was certainly hoping no Witch's Oven, so we could did get to Legion's End here. So I don't need to scry right now. So we're just going to... Kind of keep these Charming Princes flickered. And we'll scry whenever we want to. Doesn't have to be right now. Let's 
just gonna gain the life. Uh, I did not want to face this again. That last match was so long and grueling. I did not want to face this again. That doesn't matter, Rex. <laughs> yeah, grueling. Where's our Liliana? Liliana definitely won us the games that we won. Hopefully I can set up Legion's Ending, the Gilded Goose. That'd be a good card to Legion's End for sure. With this Trail of Crumbs. Not getting anything from Soren hurts. The thing is, is, with this combo, they can't possibly miss a land drop, so it's not uh, like I'm, uh, I'm missing land drops here. It can't miss a land drop. Could have done better with the Corvold. They did not bring back the Called and Familiar on my end stub. They just. Uh, you know, hold priority. They play the Corvold. You have to sacrifice something, but in response to that trigger, you bring the Called and Familiar back. You have to draw another card there. Could have, dealt, could have drawn another card, basically. I think they're doing just fine, though. Yes, you do not need uh, Fae of Wishes to make a Fire's deck work, yeah. That was a little too early to cast casualties, wasn't it?
Like, I have two twos out here. Like, isn't it better just to play a two three lifelinker and then just advance your advance your hand with trailer crumbs? They could have like they don't get to draw a card there. Like, why why are they scared of a two two to cast casualties of war? Just just play a two three and draw cards. It's plays like that that may get us back into this, because we shouldn't be in this at all. How many food tokens does it take to change a light bulb? <laughs> I don't know, how many? There's Liana. My opponent has left so many cards on the table. Trailer crumbs. Today, death. Do 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 do. Oh. Hmm. Let's see. This draws three cards. I think that's worth it. The having the Midnight Reapers out there can be a little dangerous. No lands. I wanted to hit more land drops. OG Witch Stalker. That was a cool card. Yeah, this is Two Door Cinema Club Changing of the Seasons. That's the name of the song.
darn. Found another Mayhem Devil. There's a land. Silly Yoga with like the Twitch Prime YouTube. sub. Uh, thank you so much for joining the channel. Brand new Twitch Prime sub. I appreciate that. So my opponent does have lethal here. They can do six damage. But I'm not going to necessarily assume that they realize that. Looks like they do. Yeah, Dizzy, uh, yeah. Questing Beast is a, that's a good use of a Mythic Wild card. I don't think there's necessarily going to be anything that makes Questing Beast a worse card. No coming. <laughs> there you go, Matthew. You just got it for yourself. It's just going to take up the entire stream time, isn't it? So yeah, I really don't have enough for this matchup. As we talked about before. That's okay. We're we're gonna you know fight hard. Hey, plastic gun. Kaya's wrath really helped that last time. We'll see how Kai's rat does here. And we need to draw lands. Our deck has 26 lands. I like our cards. Might as well give it a try. That's a, not a good card to draw. Come on, 26 land deck. Just need to draw lands. Not five drops. All right, first land drawn. We'll lead with the Midnight Reaper so that if there is removal, we get to draw another card. Next land drawn. Hey, Kevin. No, this is standard. Hopefully help us hit more land drops, get to Liliana.
Got a cauldron familiar exiled. And Murderous Rider. Well then. <clears throat> Their other card in hand must be really good if they want to get rid of Murderous Rider while they know that we have Liliana and Kenrith. Probably something else that just kills these things. Yeah, Gilded Goose. It's very powerful. <clears throat> yeah, I was gonna say they like this they like this card in hand. And not want to exile it. Whatever it was. Wow, they're still exiling murderous riders instead. It's not bad for me. Kenrith doing its thing. I want to get this last card out of hand that they like so much. It's probably like, yeah, it's probably like Casualties of War. But that kind of means I'm not really doing anything else. Soren doesn't kill things. All right, casualties is out of here.
Yeah, Soren's Plus only does damage to players and Planeswalkers. Um, but even if it could target the Familiar, they would just sacrifice the Familiar and bring it back and could, would still be able to block with it. Honestly, not sure if I'm supposed to be attacking that last turn. Because, yeah, I am allowing them to do this. Okay, my am I taking lethal if I don't? If I if I play Liliana, am I taking lethal? Uh, this is, I guess, each one of these activations is two two damage, so two four, and then next turn six eight. So the answer is yes, I am. No, Soren attack would not be a would not be a good thing, because they would, they would block the five five with the cauldron familiar and sacrifice it, so it would not gain life, and then they would just have the seven seven block the three four. No, Soren cannot kill the the cauldron familiar. One and then yes. And then two, yes. Any if the Cauldron Familiar is dead, they, it can be brought back very easily. Basically, cannot kill the Cauldron Familiar whatsoever. Right now, there's there's nothing that I have that will kill the Cauldron Familiar, so you just don't have to worry about it. That thing dying. The Cauldron Familiar gets to block everything, and can't die. I have Kai's Wrath in the deck. I could draw. It's the only thing I can draw right now is Kai's Wrath. There's two of them in here. If we draw Kai's Wrath, there's a good chance that we win based on time. It'll be If we draw Kai's Wrath, it's going to be difficult for my opponent to kill me. Yep. Yeah, good chance my I mean we, we can't change it here, but good chance my sideboard needs to be changed up a whole lot to, to be tailored for that matchup. Because it's not at all right now. There's a lot of things that we could be doing in the sideboard for that matchup that we're not that currently not doing. It would of course help it would of course hurt us everywhere else, but we can make that matchup a lot better than what it is with black and white has a lot of good tools. Yeah, it's, it's the same same uh, same mono green deck that I played a week ago, Papa Tim. All right, good. Not Jund Sacrifice. Man, I was tired of playing against that. <laughs> After an hour for those two matches. I'm glad we're going to something else.
All right, draw white land. Hey, Frost Guardian. Welcome to the channel. Got a brand new Twitch Prime sub in here. Thank you so much. Our six of the day. Another brand new Twitch Prime sub. QL331. Awesome. Welcome to the channel also. All right, Scar Barons is good. Hopefully we can get that fifth land and have Cavalier of Night kill the Wrinkle. They're going to be making us discard here pretty soon as they are able to unload their hand, and I am not. Oketra... This is just really bad for me. Oh, come on. Never mind. Now it's really bad for me. Sometimes you cast your spells, sometimes you don't. That time we did not. Yeah, like we have we have a lot of cards for Jeskai Fires and for you know, like the Simic Nissa decks, not nearly as many for John Sacrifice. Um We don't necessarily have cards that like cards that are bad that you just want to take out immediately. We just have to hit our land drops. Like we're playing twenty six lands for a reason. And it was not to just get stuck on lands. That was not the reason. Yeah, Despark can hit Cleave and Rankle. I'm kind of struggling getting what to take out like I like Midnight Reaper is the obvious one to take out because it deals damage but Midnight Reaper is kind of our card that we need to hit our land drops um Cavalier of I guess we're taking out Cavalier of Dawn I guess I'll try a couple Disparks if we don't have Midnight Reaper we'll probably need to trim Sorens All right. So they're playing red black aggro. All right, we'll see if we hit land drops this time. Yeah, I, I kind of forgot about Grum Goalie, Papa Tim. We I've made a, a few Grum Goalie decks. But 
yeah, could definitely make more. Um, you know, Grumgully is awesome with with the Great Henge, of course. They're probably not going to have anything to dispark here. I don't know how they could, but I'm playing the planes instead of the Godless Shrine so that we can activate Fenlurker. To be able to trade with Robber the Rich. I don't I don't know if Oko really messed up Chrome Goalie. That saves us a lot of life. Yeah, I mean, basically it'd be like the Gruul Henge deck that we played not too long ago would basically be a good Grum Gully deck. Just it does it just doesn't have Grum Gully, but basically be that that deck. But just add Grum Gully and then add um, add the two two. That's a weird attack. They have to activate Knight to kill Soren. I think they attacked wrong here. They need to attack the other way. Have Robber attack Soren. Uh, add Growth Chamber Guardian. Yeah, that card. Good card to dispark. Hmm. Let's keep that. That'll let me Cavalier of Night and Dispark next turn. And plus, yeah, then then if they want to attack with a robber, they're taking a land also. <clears throat> so they may be thinking, okay, I kept that card on top. We need to take it. It's not a bad trade at all. Liliana. The spark's looking better and better. Spawn of Mayhem, Liliana. Alright, looks like we're going to get game two. I wonder how we'll do game three. Yeah, Despark looked good there. 
I mean, we never cast it, so I don't know how good it, it really looked, but it had a lot of targets. I think this is okay. Yeah, it looked good. Yeah, oh, that card style. Good, good call. <laughs> no, my opponent's not sniping whatsoever. They never had a good a good chance to play Wrinkle. No, they were not holding Wrinkle in hand, therefore they're sniping. I don't like this either. I guess we're keeping this over five, and I guess we get rid of the Liliana. The the second Soren isn't anything to write home about either. Let me get rid of the second Soren. Maybe we hit enough land drops and we like Liliana minus four. And it does something. So the reason to play Dreadhorde Butcher instead of Rankle is whenever you're going to be blocking. Uh, they they were just going to be blocking and keeping their life, you know, when they're at 8, so Rankle doesn't block. Like, you'd, you'd rather just block with Dreadhorde Butcher than block with Rankle if you're just going to be blocking. With how the life totals were. With my opponent also at six cards, I want to try to get two cards from him. You know, even if we're just getting lands, it makes it harder to play like an Ember Cleave. So we're we're taking the damage here. <clears throat> yeah, Hawkeye's asleep. Let's just gain three life. We got the scribe of the temple anyway. I think that's a good choice. And I'm liking that we have Liliana in hand instead of a second Soren. If I don't block, they get to play the Bone Crusher Giant. If I block, they don't get to. <clears throat> Ember Cleave would make blocking more difficult. Certainly hope no Ember Cleave. <laughs> no, I, I haven't, Eldron. I've actually, I've never really read a comic book before. Well, that's not good to spoil it.
pretty good. So blocking the Knight of the Oven Legion with the Charming Prince kind of keeps them from playing other things. Wow. That's rough. That's rough. I need that Legion's End. That's rough. I was going to be getting rid of these two Fervent Champions. Huh. expecting them to pump both the fervent champions but i guess but then i guess i could kill the, the charming i just wasn't expecting them to attack with the knight of the ebon legion they just have both fervent champions attack the soren or you know like a robber and a fervent champion attack soren and then one fervent champion attack me So, of course, we're blocking with both of our creatures. Don't get to cast Legion's End. Back off. We'll just swift end during and draw during combat, or we'll you know enter combat. We'll cast swift end on the ro the robber of the rich. So they don't get any cards. Yeah, that was a good that was a good land for us to draw. Wow. That was pretty critical. If I let them attack with the Robber of the Rich, they would have exiled Dispark and been able to Dispark my Liliana. That would not have been good. I'll just scry. We're, we're doing good. Okay. Three and one. Uh, sorry to hear about that, AJ. Yeah, we're gonna have some good magic here tonight. Yeah, that was that was a good match. Let's stay let's stay away from John's sacrifice. And their very long matches. Oh, that's pretty awesome, Matthew. Black, white, value town. Yeah, I really like Oketra. Uh, we haven't we haven't uh, had an Oketra game so far. Uh, 
I, I really like Cavalier of Night, and I really like Oketra. Bleh. All right, we'll keep Oket... Uh, we're not going to have, like, more creatures maybe to cast afterwards. I don't know. We'll just keep the Cavalier of Night. Temple of Silence? Who plays Temple of Silence? Yeah, yeah, this deck is updated since because the last time that we played it was like Halloween. So yeah, we've up, so I've updated it. Ooh, get that Kenrith out of here. Dovin. I don't enjoy seeing things suffer, but I'll make an exception for you. I could pay three life and activate the Fen Lurker's ability. You know, like they block here and kill the kill their one one. Or not pay three life, but th pay three mana. Honestly, it doesn't really seem worth it. Cool. Yeah, get absorbed out of here. You're doing me a favor. So I could just play Soren and tick up Soren and kill the Dovin that way. That's an option. But I kind of like attacking. And maybe see if they keep Dovin alive. Oh, they did not. Let's see. Well, then I'll just play the Burglar app. And the Barons. Yeah, we need more Dovin decks. Dovin's just not... I'm not sure if Dovin's strong enough. But yeah, maybe... I think I do need dove in more. Ooh, that's pretty cool. Everything will be fine if we stand together. That's pretty cool. I am proud of those who walk beside. Yeah, I knew it was going to be a long league, but uh, the Jun Sac, you know, playing blue white control, Jun Sacrifice, Jun Sacrifice, the first three matches really made this a long league. Looks like we're probably not going to play the mono green mid range today because of this long league. It just happens sometimes, standard. I don't want to hurt you. Yeah, King J played against that deck dozens and dozens of times. It's my least favorite deck in standard, the Team or Clover deck. I I don't care for it. Um, it's very very good. I just don't I don't like I don't like it in principle. Friendship. Nothing wrong with Bell Hunt. Feel like we can do better though. I will have revenge for House Markov. You test my patience. The weak. You should consider Destroy. talking instead. Draw an extra card. 
Hmm. See, we could do better. In case of counterspell, uh, command the dreadhorn. My army will envelop this world. They're a pretty neat, neat little deck here. It's a pretty neat little deck. Hmm. You know, so we saw like counter magic, Dovin, Soren. Like they have to be playing creatures if they're playing Soren. It's like they're probably playing like the Life King creatures, which I guess Legion's End good there. We'll have Noxious Grasp. They'll kill a, a Johnny, Soren, that kind of stuff. Hmm. Um, maybe just the Murderous Riders are good. And I don't need to play the Noxious Grasps. We'll just play one Duress, one Grasp. Yeah, so, so the reason why I didn't do that Storm of uh, get the Prince back and uh, flicker the Fen Lurker is because the Fen Lurker doesn't come back till end step. And I wanted to make sure that they didn't have a counter spell in hand because if they had a counter spell in hand, they would have been able to counter the Liliana. So I needed, I needed to get the discard thing immediately. That's what I was thinking there. Hmm. Just too high of a curve with a four, two fives, and a six. Yep, better be sure there. My opponent's mulligan in a whole lot. All right, four and one. We're on to the final boss. It's too bad their neat little deck didn't get to really play a game two. Not really play. They didn't get to play a game two at all. Anyway, let's get to it. Let's get all this gold. We're four and one. Wow, it says, so like for the modify emotes thing, my channel points just say infinite. That's cool. I need to just modify my emotes all that I want. All right, I'm confident we can draw land. All right, time to play actual magic, not play modify emo game. <laughs> Unlimited power. Swamp, 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 swamp. Hey, Kimpachi. If 
we were a 25 land deck, I wouldn't keep. But I don't know, 26 land deck. I'm I'm just usually pretty confident in drawing drawing a land with 26 lands. But we didn't do it. No, nah, we're not dead yet. I'm glad that we have the swift ends. They'll help us kill Nissa's. Oh, come on. Had it the whole time. I was hoping they're going to be activating Gilded Goose at my end step so that I'd be able to kill the Wicked Wolf in response. <clears throat> they did not do that, though. As long as we win, nothing else matters. Surprised they didn't sacrifice one of these six forests. Having the two mana creatures out and everything. So I have to kill the Vraska because otherwise the Vraska would just get rid of the rider. Hawkeye's doing really good. Yeah, he's feeling good. And is much improved. Not sure what that could be besides just a land uh, mask girl. That makes sense not to play mask girl. We're starting to stabilize. I want seven mana next turn. Four, five, six, seven. No. No, no, because the Murderous Rider has lifelink, so we were not dead if they attacked all out. Well, I guess if they attacked with the Paradise Druid, too. Yeah, probably. I guess I probably was.
Let's just tap this thing so they don't get to attack us again. Then we can drop Liliana next turn. Could kill the goose also, of course. But I like, I don't know, I kind of like just tapping that. The undead make yeah, donation decks are, are $20. Rise and shine. And then all you have to do, you know, you just have to send me a link to your deck and let me know what what day and what time slot you'd like me to play the deck. As easy as that. Oh, they got Trail of Crumbs? Oh, I needed to kill that goose. I'm going to be killing the goose this turn with the Cavalier of Night. That's such an incredibly good hit. That's just the perfect hit. All right, well, I got I got punished for not killing the goose. But yeah, this this could be over now with Trail of Crumbs. We, as we talked about with, with the Jun Sacrifice, this is the one card that that outgrinds me. It's definitely been the only card that's defeated us so far today. I think Gadwick won a game. But Oh, well, that's awesome, Hillbilly. Yeah. Yeah, anytime. What are you doing? Just play the stupid cauldron familiar. The game's over. So just Jun sacrifice, huh? I just have one. I don't have a, a very good plan. I don't. I don't have a very good sideboard against against Trail of Crumbs. We could have a lot better sideboard. With, you know, more Mortifies, Kaya, Orzov, Usurper. Stuff like that. Hey, Savage. All right, well, we, we almost stabilized there after not doing anything forever. We came close. We need land. I had a very strange deck a while back when I used to be on this other stream all the time. It was... A deck with many lines. It took a lot of practice to win games. And they did a donation deck. Oh five. Yuck. Hmm. 
No, this is um, Legend of Zelda. Why is Goose not blocking? I'm tapped out. How do I get a point across there? Sometimes sacrifice is necessary. Except me. Well, we'll see how see how this works out for us. Definitely need to shuffle. We're drawing all the lands. You know, like last game, we needed to draw all these lands. We're drawing all those lands that we needed to. Last game. I like playing the Fable Passage there, get a land out of the deck, make it just a, a little bit less likely to draw a land. But also shuffle it up, maybe we were just kind of in a land pocket. I don't know. <laughs> the deck's lagging, it's it's only now getting the land request from last game. Uh, it's a little behind. here They definitely seem to have an instant in hand they keep on kind of looking at I kind of wouldn't mind doing the Liliana minus four and then drawing two we would just we would just re basically redraw the Oketra for the next turn but we would keep them from having these paradise druids and you know keep them from having more mana like you know it's basically destroying two lands that 
mean, you know, Ketra comes back. Well, we, we kind of have nothing over here. I do love a good death whale. Oh no. Back up, Oketra. Its loss will serve us. So this Vraska's at six. They have to plus two more times before they can ultimate. Those cards aren't very good. Yeah, Legion's End versus Witch's Oven would just be just a regular removal spell. I think we can do... Well, I hope we can do better than just a regular removal spell for something that they don't even have in play right now. This looks like a fun new toy. Okay, we'll do, Matthew. This is not good. Things that are good are not good. This is not good. Uh, I have to attack out at Garrick to keep them from ultimating Garrick. I don't know what I'm really doing about this Golgari Queen. I don't know why my opponent is not sacrificing their wolves to make food. I don't know what else they're planning to do with Witch's Oven while they're tapped out.
Like they could have just had two more food for free if they would have just sacked their wolves. We just have to draw Murderous Rider or Dispark. They're just kind of helping us here. Just the exact opposite of the last game where we couldn't draw a land. The exact opposite. It's already 12 to 19 cards this time. And then one extra card that we can't even play. Minusing Liliana doesn't make any sense. Because then it's gone. And we don't draw the cards from Liliana. Yeah, I do too. I really like these borderless tokens. I agree. It looks really cool. I just like these borderless cards a whole lot. I really wish we had more choices with basic lands with card styles. They haven't haven't given given us very many choices. There's only like one of each art from each set. The lands were just in the store. They just cost, you know, gold or gems. One of the two. Do they disconnect? <clears throat> they disconnect? Good, I don't think they would... I don't know, see, like, now they're doing stuff. Disconnected for a second, I guess. I don't think they wouldn't... They would just do no blocks.
What's the bitter blossom code? Your corpse will make a nice souvenir. It was probably going to die in. They sack the cauldron familiar. Dead. They were a lousy servant anyway. Hmm. Well, Fap, yeah, I, I had a Castle Ardenvale to be able to block still. If, if they would have, I wanted them to go this Golgari Queen. I wanted them to minus on one of my things and attack, and attack out. That would have been great for me. Because I, I would not have died because of the Castle Ardenvale. I don't know, he probably started it. Let's be real. Very disconnected. It's probably not really a game that we deserve to win. <laughs> the real final boss of Comcast. <laughs> no. One land. This has just been a, a really bad mana game for us, of course, with the game one, then game two, and now game three. Just have really poor ratio of lands to spells drawn
What is the blue thing next to the message box for? I don't see any blue blue thing. I guess you're probably talking about on Twitch. Well, that that worked. Playing the Scour Barons first. So they got 10 minutes to kill me. And not a half a minute more. Lead with the Fen Lurker that makes them exile first. And then play the make them discard. Get rid of their hand. Of course, they have the Trail of Crumbs. Garouk. Garouk. So basically the reason why I went that, that route is because it's possible they had another cauldron familiar in hand and like it's really it's really good to discard a cauldron familiar but they're probably not going to discard something else and keep cauldron familiar for the last card if i go exile so i went to exile first Alright, they got eight minutes now to kill me. It's certainly possible. They're they're definitely ahead here. Like they have trailer crumbs. Like they have, you know, oven familiar trailer crumbs. Like they're ahead right now. They're very far ahead now. Two trailer crumbs. It's all about, well, that was a great draw for me. It's all about whether or not they can kill me in eight minutes, I guess. Liliana was perfect for me. I hope they don't find something that kills Liliana. Your corpse will make an excellent minion. <laughs> Rise. <laughs> They're just going to be sacri sacrificing Cauldron Familiar anyway. Now, I don't have to worry about trading at Fen Lurker with having the Liliana in play. Darn. Seven and a half minutes now. Yeah, I, th I think our our sideboard needs Kaya or Zav Usurper. And more Mortifies. We need we need more hate for this matchup.
got six minutes now. Oh, they should not bring Culture Familiar back right there. <clears throat> just waste those Trailer Crumbs activations. I guess they just value attacking that much. Hey, whales. Good evening. Yeah, this one's Final Fantasy X. Added this one recently. So they're at five minutes. I really like Final Fantasy IX. Yeah, that may be my favorite of the group. Really, really like Final Fantasy IX. The uh, Midnight Reaper is just non-token. So making a token doesn't, we don't get to draw a card. Surprised they didn't sacrifice a Cauldron Familiar there to kill my Midnight Reaper. I thought they were going to do that. Oh, is, is 12 that good? I've never played 12. Alright, well I guess I guess we got the five one. That match should not have really been a win. But I guess time is part of the game. So I liked a lot of what our deck had going on. But I did not prepare for the Cauldron Familiar matchup too well. And I think that that can be changed in sideboard. As you can see, I was, I was 
you know, had like blue eye control, um, the Nissa decks, and Jeskai fires, that kind of stuff. More. But yeah, I think we could have like two Kayas and an extra Mortify just to kind of start with. I think we don't really need the, that last uh, Basilica Bell Hunt. And honestly, we don't really need the Noxious Grass. We can just use Dispark against Nissa and. Um, Nissa and Nightpack Ambusher. Dispark's good enough there. So just just like a little change like that, playing two Kayas and a Mortify, I think that would be, I think that would make a big deal. I think that'd make a big change. Um, yeah, I think that's all that I want to do there. Um, Kenrith did, did a lot of good work for us. Uh, we got to, you know, just like playing it like in the real late game, um, instant speed, putting, putting like these creatures into play instant speed. Um, also just gaining life, having us stay alive, um, later. Yeah. I, I liked the Kenrith. Uh, we never really drew Cavalier of Dawn, which was like my main deck way to destroy enchantments. What's up, Hawkeye? Never really drew that card. Um, <clears throat> but but there we go. It worked pretty well. Um, but yeah, I think all we had to do, I think we have to add in three more cards in the sideboard for that matchup. All right, anyway, that's going to be it for Orza Value. So those of y'all on YouTube, I hope you hit the like button over there and leave some comments. And hope you all enjoy the deck. You know, you know, let me know what you think about Orzhov value. And, of course, Hawkeye here. <laughs> He's just saying hello. Uh, but thank you so much for watching some Orzhov value. And I'll see you for the next video. Okay. Back to the normal playlist. Whew, that was a long one. Let's reset Arena. And let's upload to YouTube. All right, upload.